Okay, so now we're going to talk about um, Krebs cycle or the TCA tricarboxylic acid cycle. Um, if you remember that the product of glycolysis was a three carbon compound called pyruvate. Now that's produced in the cytoplasm. The next thing we do is we start um, aerobic respiration and aerobic respiration occurs in an amazing organelle and this amazing organelle is called mitochondria. Now mitochondria have an inner membrane and have an outer membrane with a hugely important gap between the two. Um, the inside, the inside, the cytoplasm of the mitochondria is called the matrix and this is the intermembrane space or in, intermembrane space between here and these bits or where they stick out to increase the surface area for oxidative phosphorylation. These are called Christi. Um, wonderfully bizarre name. But there we go. Right, let's have a look at what happens to this pyruvate molecule. So the pyruvate molecule is being made in the um, in the cytoplasm, and it goes in um, to the mitochondrial matrix. Now, the three carbon um, pyruvate gets decarboxylated by a decarboxylase enzyme which produces carbon dioxide. Now it is hugely important that you realize that the oxygen here has nothing whatsoever to do with the oxygen you breathe in. At the same time as this is being decarboxylated, a dehydrogenase enzyme removes an electron and a hydrogen, so this is an oxidation step, and it takes a carrier blob molecule called NAD and it transfers onto it the electron and the hydrogen forming reduced NAD or NADH. Now that produces a two carbon fragment because remember we've lost a carbon dioxide. Now that two carbon fragment is an acetyl. Now that two carbon fragment then gets picked up by a carrier blob molecule called coenzyme A. And this coenzyme A delivers this to a four carbon compound. Now I'm deliberately going to try and avoid using the words to make sure that people with the, not the words, the names for each molecule to make sure that you've got a pretty good idea of the process that's happening. So the two carbon acetyl gets delivered to a four carbon, joins the four carbon molecule to form a six carbon. Now this six carbon then gets decarboxylated by a decarboxylase enzyme to produce carbon dioxide where the oxygen has nothing to do with the oxygen you breathe in. And at the same time, you produce another reduced NAD by dehydrogenase enzyme removing the hydrogens and the electrons. That produces a five carbon compound, and that five carbon compound is again, I hope you see the pattern here, decarboxylated and at the same time dehydrogenated, producing an NADH. We've now got a four carbon compound. Now, this four carbon compound gets turned into another four carbon compound and loses a bit of energy, and that bit of energy is used to directly phosphorylate an ADP to an ATP. It's actually a little bit more complicated than that, but stick with it. And this is made through substrate level phosphorylation, not oxidative phosphorylation. Now that four carbon compound then loses another electron, which goes on to a slightly lower energy, um, slightly lower energy carrier molecule called FAD, and this becomes reduced again, called becoming FADH. Now this four carbon compound again gets turned back to produce the original four carbon compound, and at the same time we lose another NAD, becoming an NADH. So this whole process is a cycle. So this is the Krebs cycle here, which involves taking the two carbon compound, joining it to a four, 
two steps of decarboxylation, the production of three NADs, production of an FAD, and production of an ATP. Now remember, this goes around once for each acetyl, and because you've produced two pyruvates from each glucose, you'll produce two acetyls, so this goes around twice for each glucose molecule. Also, the link reaction, which is about taking the three carbon pyruvate and turning it into two carbon acetyl, that's going to occur twice for each glucose because you produce two pyruvates. What you can see from this is that we've broken down the three carbon molecule and we've produced a carbon dioxide here, a carbon dioxide here, and a carbon dioxide here. So we've completely removed the carbons. Um, we've produced an NED here, an NED here, an NED here, an NED here, and an FAD there. And we've only produced two ATPs per glucose from this process. And this is produced directly through substrate level phosphorylation. The next part of the story is what happens to these um, reduced coenzyme carriers here, 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 and here, and how they're regenerated because this process can only continue if you carry on regenerating the NADHs back to NADs and the FADHs back to FADs. And how that's achieved is through oxidative phosphorylation, which occurs on the inner mitochondrial membrane. So if you remember from here, the process of Krebs cycle and the link reaction occurs in the matrix and that produces the reduced coenzyme carriers and those hydrogens and electrons go off to the inner mitochondrial membrane and then that regenerates the carriers NAD and FAD because it delivers those electrons to the inner mitochondrial membrane where they go through oxidative phosphorylation. I hope that made some vague sense.